Hey guys, welcome back to another loadout video for duck hunting 2022. Crazy, can't believe it. I think this is like our fifth one. This video is brought to you by Motion Ducks. Guys, check out Motion Ducks. It's one of our favorite things out of all this gear out here and it will bring birds in, the decoys, on a windless day. Simple setup, this is it. You got a weight, they also sell a weight bag. This isn't from them, it's just kind of a weight we have. You got the pull string, and then this is it right here. And that's how compact it can go. And what it does, and I'll show some clips and overlay it over here, but you can go from four to seven to 10. You can add on and add on to this whole setup and bring motion in your spread. It's one of my favorite decoy rig setups I've ever had. And I think I, Thomas would attest to that as well. So check out Motion Ducks, great company. And you can go in there actually to get a discount. You can go in motionducks.com forward slash MVM, guys, and you'll see a deal that's just for you guys, just for the people that watch our videos and get a really good discount. And on top of that, when you go to check out, put in the code MVM10 and get another 10% off. Go check it out, guys. I promise you it'd be worth it. Because a lot of times you're out there hunting, if all you had was motion, you'd be hammering on the birds. But because you look a bunch of dead, stagnant decoys out there, birds know it, they flare off, they're gone. So check out Motion Ducks. We'll be using it all season long like we have for the last four or five years. So I guess we'll start with the dog stuff first. Um, a lot of this stuff is redundant. Me and Thomas have pretty much a lot of the same stuff. So he just brought over and filled in the gaps that we don't have. So here's a gunner killer. I've actually never had this in one of our loadout videos. I think I did a duck dog loadout, but I never put this in there. I bought this, I believe three years ago. It's the best investment I ever made. I have a friend named Colton. They were in a horrible accident and actually his dog survived because of this. If it would have been one of those cheap Petco ones, he would have for sure been dead. It's got the weather kit that I have. I bought to add on to it. So like in the winter time when you're hunting, you know, summer it can breathe through the sides. Winter time, close it up. It's got locks on top and bottom and then you can key lock it. So not worry about someone stealing your dog at night. And then inside it's got, I bought the, the padding for the dog but lots of room. This is an extra large. I bought just a couple months ago, a new e-collar for Rocky. It's the same exact one. I actually, I take that back. I had an 825. This is a 425. And the reason I kind of downgraded is because I don't need all the fancy stuff to have multiple dogs on one receiver, which this will still do more than one dog. But as you can tell, you can see how small that is. And it's not so much weight hanging around your neck. After four years, I think it went out. So bought a fresh one this year. Got it all fixed up and went with the lighter model. Dog vest. The reason I use this one, it has nothing to do with the brand or anything like that. It's because he's such a big barrel chested dog that I had to cut way out. And as you can see, it's only like a three mil ply and it was easier to cut. And he's had this one for like, I think three years now. So there's some other ones I tried. I just could not make them work no matter how big of a size I bought. You guys have seen this before. It's just like an accordion. I am buckle three buckles. It's made by Rig and Right. It's for like a ground blind for the dog and I just pop these three and bam, it expands out. Close it back together, three straps, you're good to go. So new this year that we're gonna try out, as you guys seen last year, we started using final approach decoys and loved them. And that's really the only thing of final approaches we used. Well, this year we're trying more and more stuff and for sure we're, we're staying with the final approach decoys, love them. But we are gonna tr start trying some of final approaches apparel and their gear out. First off, I guess I'll talk about the bag. This is their waiter bag actually really like it it's pretty nice and it's roomy because i've seen some decoy bags sick has to be honest with you that they try to make it compact and that's great but like you have to like smash the boots and and you got to crunch everything in there in my opinion and i don't want to do that to my boots because if it gets warm it'll be, it'll make that rubber kind of stay in that position it was folded in or it could cause cracks so i like the fact that they did this big open bag and they kept it basically like waterproof inside so if you put it in your truck you're not dripping stuff from your decoys i think you can take that out too if you want to like spray it off it's bigger you got stuff a lot of pockets on the side you can put stuff in and then the cool thing is on the bottom you unzip it and you can pull out this whole mat that you can stand on so if you're on rocks mud whatever you're not going to get your feet wet or whatever that i really like that too or honestly you could just stand inside of it if it's empty you're taking your waders off stand inside of it slipping right off and then put your regular shoes back on this year you will see us in these we're going to be in these final approach waders and they are zip up i've always been honest on this channel i love my sick waders there ain't nothing going to change that especially after the fact that the, the warranty that they have 
We just, me and Thomas both got our stuff back and they took care of us and I had to pay a dime for it. How do you beat that? It's pretty impossible unless you match that. So we are trying out this year, final approaches gear and one of the things being their waders. I will say now I put these on first impressions guys, the boots are incredible. Like actually I was blown away. The boots are every bit as comfortable as Sitka's. I was shocked. Some of the other things, the features they have, that is the zip, they got the zip on this and I gotta put this to use for myself. So I don't really wanna say a lot about it and push people to it, but they are pretty slick. They are comfortable, boots are comfortable. They have a zip. I want a season of use before I say a lot about them. There is Velcro on the stroller straps. So unless, maybe if you just slide them off instead of unbuckle them every time, cause we know how Velcro does wear out. But other than that, they got really nice, comfortable straps that go around the waist. Got padding in the back. They got shell spots in the front, waterproof zip. So, I mean, I will say they're, they're really comfortable. So we will be trying those out this year. So don't be surprised and don't think uh, something crazy if you see us in that instead of sick because we're definitely going to try this out. Research and development, man. Try different things, make things better. And that's what I like about Final Approach, guys. They are very, very willing to make their stuff better and they've made a lot of quality stuff and I'll show you more of that here in a second. All right, next, um, and if I'm skipping it because Thomas is gonna talk about it, I got the Momarsh dog stand. I do kind of like the one with the cover better because Rocky's black and sometimes he sticks out, but the hassle of putting it together and stuff, I just decided try to get him covered up and I'll use this one because it's so simple. Momarsh makes it, really is my favorite dog stand and um, underneath you can, you can tighten it. There's Velcro if you need to make it looser or tighter or whatever. And then these legs, extend all the way out or come back in. So it's pretty slick. Sick of waders. I'm not gonna talk about the waders themselves. We've done enough videos on these, but I had seam failure in the crotch in my waders, right in the very crotch where it's like sewn. And I started feeling a little bit of a leak in my right boot for its third season, which the boot thing's mine. That's wearing tear, right? Like I stepped, I was in a bunch of sharp rocks and I felt one puncture, like I felt like it went right through. Anyways, last year, both those things happened within a couple days of each other. It was at the end of season. I was like, oh, I'll just send it in after season. Well, I sent it in. The crotch is seam failure. That's on them and they fixed it, no charge. The boots, however, is on me, right? Like if you wear the boots out, whatever, you gotta buy new ones. They fixed the boots for free, guys. They didn't charge me one single thing. It's like, how do you beat that? So basically I got brand new boots, seams fixed, no charge. Next up, got the Lander duck strap. I love that. Um, I'm gonna get a different one this year because this is really wide. There's another one that's more narrow than that. I just, I had a long time ago and I lost it, so I'm gonna get another one. This is a must. For when? when? For in the boat. <laughs> when it's 20 degrees outside and you're going 30 miles an hour. <laughs> is that your whole runner? This uh -huh. is my whole runner. <laughs> whole runner setup right here. Amazon, $25.99, baby. Can't beat it. And then if it gets a little too toasty for you, there you go. <laughs> Final approach, decoy gloves. These things are sweet. And I'll tell you another reason I, I think I'm gonna love these is for run, running the boat down the river. Just to having a good grip and they're waterproof, windproof. So not only will I set our decoys up with these, but I'll also, uh, when we're rolling in the boat. Nightcore, Thomas got me hooked on these a long time ago. This is actually, they actually sent us these. These are the HIC 65 Nightcore. And this goes even brighter than the one, I can't remember the model. These are 1200 lumens. They're less? No, they're more. So what's the other one, 600? A thousand. A thousand, okay. And you can tell a big difference. And they do different things. They flash, they have two, two, three different lights on this. It's pretty cool. Anyways, they sent us two pairs of these. I believe you have, I gave you yeah. one. These are by far the best flashlights out there. Rechargeable. Must have thermocell. I don't even think we've really put these in any of our videos, but for early season when the mosquitoes are out, don't leave home without it. Farm to feet. Everybody knows if you know me good enough, you know I swear by these socks. I wear my regular cotton ankle socks underneath, but I throw these over top inside before I put my waders on. They're wool. They're not cheap, guys. They're like, I think they're like 27 a pair or something like that. Go to their site. Sometimes you can find them on Amazon, but farm to feet, I get the biggest size and I don't even have a big foot. But these are the Cedar Falls series and it just goes up to like basically the top of your calf and just helps you from getting any chafing or raw or anything. I, I just really like them. Plus your feet don't get all sweaty. This is actually a version there's two that I've been trying out this year and I like them so far. I was telling you about these. These are uh, the midweight. So these are heavyweight and which I use from beginning to end of season, but this year I'm gonna use these early season till about middle of season. This year I bought the X maker, Kirk McCullough cut down. He's been on our podcast guys. Check our podcast out. If you like hunting, fishing, big game, politics, 
anything like that, guys. We do it all on our podcast, The Game Show. Check it out. And he came on our podcast. Go check that episode out. It's awesome. So much wisdom and knowledge there. Someone that's been duck hunting for years and years, and not just in the timber. But this is a beautiful call. <coughs> Little different, but he swore to me in that podcast that it's gonna bring the ducks down. <laughs> but I guess I gotta learn how to blow it first. Anyways, hybrid uh, beer bottle color is the name of this. It's a JJ Layers hybrid. I think I'm running a what's the stock? Three five zero. Yeah. One three one point three five zero in this. I got the T1 Timber Large Bore. I love Jade. Jade and Black. That's new this year. This is, I just didn't like the other color I had. It was like a, a cream color. But I run uh, 370 in this. So pretty pretty longer read. Got my dog whistle. Got this uh, Acme whistle. What's the guy, name of the guy that makes this? Uh, Billy John Quinto. Does amazing widget. And then, of course, the spinning wing. That doesn't... I don't always leave that on there, but that's for that new Avionix. Spinning wing, Thomas will talk about that probably in a second. And then everyone always asks, shout out to a good friend of ours, Jonathan at Quack Lanyards. Makes awesome lanyards, by far my favorite. And this, I've actually had this one for a long time, so. Ammo for this year, heavy metal, three inch four shot is what I like in heavy metal. Heavy bismuth for my 12 gauge, three inch six shot. 20 gauge, I'll be shooting three inch six shot and a little bit of heavy 12 this year too, but more so probably heavy bismuth. And then the new 28 gauge, I don't know if you guys knew about that yet, but three inch 28 gauge, six shot. Going at 1350 feet per second with a one ounce load. So really pumped to try to get on some mallards with that this year. If you want to see a review of any of these guns, shotguns that I have or Thomas, they're on a channel. Just have to go into like the shotgun review playlist or whatever and you can see all these but this is new for this year i've been wanting one for three years now is the benelli ethos cordoba best best mean the benelli service treatment you know i gotta do that every year awesome gun but i'm not gonna review it i'm just letting you know that is what i'm gonna be shooting this year got it in the black and uh got the choke that's a cryo choke but i'm going to actually i think i'm gonna test this out with the rob roberts um i think the rob roberts is probably gonna win because he made it specifically for this gun, but I'm excited about it. Really quiet gun, low kicking, low recoil. I'm excited about shooting it. Compared with this ammo right here, I'm pretty pumped for this season. Next, my 20 gauge, and I'll be shooting all three of these this year, is the, I've had this for two or three seasons now, I can't remember. It's the Franke Affinity Elite 3. This is a 26 inch barrel. That 20 gauge is a 28 inch barrel. But one biggest thing I love about this, guys, is these ultra glow, ultra glow ultra glow <laughs> sights and i actually put it on my 12 gauge too just helps me acquire the target quicker not that we're staring at them when we're shooting ducks but really good shooting gun throws up to the eye really well and uh i put on this year finally because this had the cryo chokes on it too i believe if i remember it no true lock this came with true lock chokes but i put on the powder master gold black duck that choke was bad guys i had it on my 12 last year it proved itself to me. I don't need to see any more testing. Final approach, gun case. I actually really like this. They, get, they have plenty of room inside of it. Got some pouches on the side, and it's waterproofing zipper. But it's a floating case too, I believe. It's a floating case, shoulder strap. But this bad boy, if you guys haven't seen this yet, and I'm assuming play a lot of you haven't. Boom! Look at that bad boy right there. I got a video on this, so you can go look at there. So again, I'm not gonna review it, but it just got a makeover a little facelift and i got the heavy shot logo because no matter what if i work with him or not i believe in that ammo and i'll always shoot it so i wasn't scared one bit to put that on my gun because it is laser engraved my logo so sick in the metal right there and then this is a burnt bronze custom mix on this gun with heavy distressing then again i put the ultra glow sight and the powder master i used all last season season the code black duck and then a little a little surprise there on the bottom mm. so it's literally guys like i've said this in that video that i did a review on this it's like i got a brand new shotgun he even seracoded with this high-end seracoding that's different than the body um it's thinner i guess the mill for this he redid all this repainted in the browning logo all that stuff so it's pretty sick last but not least and then thomas is going to run through his stuff i wanted to throw this in there they don't know about me but maybe they will Tell my sent you if you go check them out. It's public pursuit, the public pursuit.com. And this what this is, I use uh, freelance duck hunting's 
uh, it's the North American waterfowler that you can go keep your stats, shooting, birds were, you know, harvested for the season. But I think what's really cool, Thomas, and I'll let you see inside, it's leather bound. It's just, I don't know, it seems like a really good gift. Like, probably be an awesome Christmas gift, honestly. If you look what's inside of it, this is what I like. There's just, again, that other thing I put them in with Elliot is cool, but I think I want to do this too on top of that. So it gives your alarm, when your alarm went off, arrived, your setup, shooting time, when you left the pond, how many people in the group and who they were, dogs, temperature, all that stuff, as you can see. You can like draw in your decoy spread because if you want to be a successful duck hunter, you got to keep records. And I've been keeping records for quite a while now. And that way you can know like, hey, the water levels this time last year was terrible and they're the same this year, then I, maybe I don't want to hunt there. I want to go somewhere else. Moon phases, that's another big thing to me. It matters a lot when duck hunting, just like it does in other forms of hunting too. So. I, I'm gonna keep a really good log and try to do this for the next several years in this. Without further ado, my brother is gonna do the rest of the story. All right, what's going on guys? I'll run through my calls first. Um, I'm running the hybrid. This is the same call I've ran for the last, I think three or four years. I run a 1.355 and I need a new read right now, but I haven't got, the, got that yet. Also got a polk pattern um, wood whistle on my lantern. I like it, sounds good. It's pretty soft. I got another whistle over here, Tess already uh, told you about it, but it's the Acme whistle. It's got a little cork in there. Same thing. This is the pintail version of the same whistle. Same lanyard maker, Quack Lanyards. Shout out. He made this little piece of plastic with the logo on it, but he made the lanyard too. Um, I'll probably always use this. The only time I don't use this is like I said last year on the, the loadout is when I use um, Sitka's little straps that I just slip them in my waders and it's like a lightweight option. You guys probably seen us a lot with our glasses, Leopold. Um, we've had these and used these all last year. These are the packouts. It's the smoke gray lens. Um, I believe all their glasses have uh, polarizing on it and they have like, I don't know, three or four different um, lens options. But I like, I like these a lot for hunting every day, whenever. Um, they're not super shiny for, you know, hunting, but uh, if you wear glasses, you know. Like I can't go, go without wearing glasses. Like every single day, if I walk out the door without glasses, I feel like my eyes are gonna blow up or something, <laughs> I don't know. We got pretty much every decoy FA um, offers. We got the green wing, blue wing, cinnamon teal, mallards, gadwall, widgeon, pintail. Um, we honestly beat the, I, will, I won't say beat the dog out of them, but we used them without trying to baby them. Um, and we used them a lot last year. Um, I don't know if we have a count of how many hunts uh, we actually put them on, but we've actually got them washed and uh, shined up for this season. They're ready to go. Um, so they do look pretty good. And honestly, we, we went through all these and there really wasn't any decoys that I could say, oh wow, there's a, there's a bunch of chips or they broke. This will be year two with these. All these decoys, they pair really well with their uh, FA rigs. Call them egg weight. That's the style that's on here. And they'll slide up and down on the, uh, the coated steel rig there. And they got really nice sturdy uh, swivels on there. They come with a little carabiner. Um, I, I mean, I love everything about them. He, we got these in the forefoot. Uh, just no complaints with them at all. Us Cali boys, we get a lot of variety over here. And these by far are the best looking cinnamons I've seen. Um, these things just pop on the water. You know, get some good color in your spread. They look awesome. Moving on, I bought this last year by recommendation of our good friend Harrison. We used this on a hunt. Actually, he had a different version of this. Um, these are called uh, a wind whacker. These aren't new guys. I'm sure almost everybody knows about these already, but we hadn't really used them before. The version he had was the, the fiberglass pole version and he basically slides it in his uh, gun case and you can basically pull this off, pull it up, and he just slide that right in his gun case and he always has it in case he don't have some kind of battery operated motion or, you know. It's stuff like that, guys, that can help your success. You always got options. It's the times that you don't have it is when you need it and you're, you're really upset at yourself. This is something else we've talked about for a couple years now, um, Higgs and Pulsators. These are still one of my favorite battery powered motion decoy just for the fact that they're so quiet. Um, you do kind of have to be gentle with them a little bit because there's a pump on the bottom and if you get 
a guy that just likes to throw decoys around everywhere sometimes you know there's things that can get caught this thing works in shallow water deep water whatever and it's really quiet moving on to spinner uh this is made by avnx we used these all last year um, they held up pretty good battery life is good there's a couple features that we just like about them they look really good by the way um, and then you could just plug them in on the bottom don't even have to take a battery out nothing like that and they got a couple different settings we use these all the time guys these are a really cheap option for a blind bag if you're just starting out and you're seeing blind bags you know they usually cost somewhere between 120 to 180 bucks you know you can get one of these for 20 30 bucks on amazon and they got backpack straps and the thing we love about this if you don't have the luxury of hunting a blind or dry blind or a pit something like that you can actually get all your stuff roll it up and you can have it next to you if you're hiking in with a backpack and you don't have a cart something like that and you know your stuff's gonna stay dry the next necessity guys is a jet sled um, this is the xl size this is plenty big for two to three guys um, to hunt out of. You could probably fit, I don't know, maybe close to four dozen or so decoys, depending on what size you're bringing. And your, your um, blind bags, you know, your guns, everything. This thing is like a Cadillac. It's got room for days. Um, I have the next size down. I, I'm not sure what exactly size it is, but <clears throat> I will say it's nice to have room sometimes. If you're gonna hunt solo, you might not need something like this unless you're gonna take a really, really big spread and you got a dog stand and things like that. This is another thing, get decoys off your back. Helps out big time. Titus uses that jet sled with a decoy cart and this is made by Rogers. Um, this thing is stout. Have not had anything come off of it. No pins come loose, no cracks in the welds or anything like that. Huge wheels so you can go through mud, anything like that. All right, so I'll just touch on the Sitka stuff I'm using. I'm still using all the same stuff. I have no complaints about it yet. This is the gradient hoodie. I actually cut the hood off because I don't really like it. So it's kind of like a gradient jacket. Pants, I got the heavyweight bottoms, the gradient bottoms. Um, these things are extremely warm. So I would not do any hiking in these. This is a core lightweight hoodie. This is still my favorite piece from Sitka. I wear this from beginning to end of duck season. This is the core midweight zip tee. This is a very good piece as well. Duck oven, when it gets real cold or we go out of state or at the end of season, whatever, this, this is, uh, I feel like it's a little warmer than the gradient and uh, it's a very, very comfortable jacket. And last but not least, I got my Delta wading jacket. I don't use this a ton. Obviously, you don't need it until you need it, right? This is a waterproof shell. There's no insulation in this and it's made specifically to wear with waders. Um, it's got the high pockets and kind of not a very long jacket. So everything's still the same with those. I still got my Sitka waders. Like Titus said, uh, we did send them in for a seam failure last year. I did test them out already, so I know there's no leaks for this coming duck season. I got the timber pattern. This will be the third year in these. So like Titus mentioned earlier, we're going to be trying out some FA gear. Um, they're coming out with some clothing for this year, and uh, it looks really good. We haven't tested it yet, but uh, we're going to put it to the test this season. So this is called the Branta jacket. They make a jacket and a vest. Really, really comfortable. It's it's a kind of more like a puffy material, um, and they make it in a pretty nice, like solid brown color. So that'll be good to wear if you're hunting or even if you're just going around town. So excited to use that. This is the Cuda mid-layer pullover. It's got a removable hood on it, kind of more of like a mid-layer. So this is something else we're going to try. These are some FA uh, waiter pants, also very comfortable. This is another piece that I'm pretty excited about. This is a Rogers brand. It's kind of similar to a, um, a Sitka lightweight hoodie. It's got a hood, obviously, and it's got um, a mask. Got my weapons of choice. I got one in the Rogers um, floatable gun case and the new FA. Both these cases are very nice. And this one, got the same uh, ethos. Benelli Cordoba, Titus Cobb, but I got one in a 20 gauge. Um, his, his is in a 28. Shot these not too long ago, and I'm really excited to use this this year. It's kind of taken me too long to buy a 20 gauge, but I had just never held anything that I was really willing to spend the money on. Kind of took a guess with this because these were so hard to find, I had to buy it off online. So 
but man when I held it I was I did not have buyer's remorse at all so excited to use this and then you guys already know from last year's video also got an A5 and the Wicked Wings this is the third or fourth year with me using this I had a, uh, a Beretta before that I noticed my my shooting went up dramatically when I got this gun still have my stock choke on there and I pretty much used a full la all last year. I got my shot cam on here still, and I just got a bracket, I forgot to bring it. But I'll be switching this back and forth for my 20 to 12 gauge this year. This is another another tool, guys, that I feel like it's uh, brought my shooting up dramatically. Man, I can't wait to put these things to work. You already know. <sighs> one-handed. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up. We'll see you on the next one.